Welcome everybody to the OMG Wrestling Podcast found on omgwrestling.com and the Tony Pizza Guy YouTube channel. I want to thank you guys for coming on out and we want to suggest that you guys listen on iTunes. And if you're over on iTunes, make sure you leave a review. And if you do leave a review, we are giving away a $25 Apple gift card to one lucky person who does leave a review. So go to omgwrestling.com. You can actually click on the iTunes link. It'll send you right over there. Or if you're on the podcasting app, you can just search OMG and it will come up. It's the easiest way to find it. So we are chocked. We are locked and we are ready for Battleground this Sunday. And Angle, I know that you had said, regardless of the card, this is probably going to be a good pay-per-view. Yeah, absolutely, Tony. I don't think we have to really dive into the card itself um, because what what tends to happen with WWE programming is the buildups are kind of lackluster, but they always deliver on the pay-per-view. Uh, and this is actually a pretty good card. I think we're going to see a lot of great action uh, at this pay-per-view. Yeah, there's a lot of matches on here that have some pretty decent build. Um, unfortunately, the SmackDown last week wasn't so good, but we do have some potential here um, and some things that could be very, very good on the card. I'll kind of run down the card here, then we'll break down each match. Um, in the pre-show, we got Ty Dillinger and Aiden English. We have the Usos on the main card versus the New Day for the WWE Tag Team Championships on SmackDown. John Cena and Rusev are fighting in a flag match. We got a... Fatal five-way elimination for the women's championship on SmackDown with Charlotte, Becky, Natalia, Tamina, and Lana. We have Nakamura and Baron Corbin. AJ Styles defending his U.S. championship against Kevin Owens. Just added to the card is Sami Zayn and Mike Kanellis. Um, and then the main event, of course, is that Punjabi prison match for the WWE championship. Uh, Jinder Mahal is defending against Randy Orton here. So, we'll talk about the pre-show for a second. We got Ty Dellinger and Aiden English. Uh, this kind of, to me, going off of my head, is just a match filler just to get these guys on the card and and, and promote the main pay-per-view. I don't see much coming out of this. Um, I really think Ty Dellinger will get the win here. Yeah, I mean, that's a very easy prediction. Uh, what's going to be really interesting, though, is what happens after this, right? Because both of these guys are kind of in limbo. I think they're really good characters. I think a lot of people kind of get behind them um, for their quality of work. But at the same time, too, like what the heck is actually going on here? You know, a kickoff match, I get it. I get why it's happening. I understand that. But at the end of the day, one thing I'm really looking forward to is seeing what happens after because that's really going to tell us you know, what WWE actually has planned with these guys going into the SummerSlam pay-per-view. Yeah, and we also, I don't know if this is going to be on the pre-show or the main show. We do have uh, Breezango is actually going to address the last thing on the the Fashion X-Files. They're going to answer, find out. So I think there's going to be a match there against the tag team. I don't really know who it's going to be. I didn't really read into spoilers or look into it too much. I, I, I honestly have no idea if it's going to be the Ascension again, maybe. I don't know. What, what do you think? Well, the Ascension is a great guess. I do think this the segment's going to go on the main card. And the reason why is because I think we're actually going to see a very quick squash match coming from a team in NXT. Um, and I think that's probably going to be Authors of Pain, but I could be wrong here. Yeah, I would like to see them, but I don't. I don't think so. I think they're still doing their thing down there. Um, that's just what I believe. Like they're going to continue to do their thing down there for a little bit. Um, but I, I don't know. It, it could be anybody. I think it's going to be. You know, it, it'll probably. I mean, I don't know. The American Alpha is not around anymore. I mean, I'm just trying to think of like. Besides the Ascension, because we just saw the Ascension last time. Everybody thought it was going to be something cool, and then it was just the Ascension last time when they did that whole mystery thing, which I like the idea of having like the mystery tag teams, which is it's, it's kind of interesting because it makes you wonder what's going to happen. Um, it would be cool if they also have a pain because they still have the NXT tag titles, but um, I mean, the only team that I think it could be... Something with Eric Rowan. Uh, Eric Rowan they're and Copper aren't anywhere. Uh, they're lacking tag teams. The Colognes, so maybe. Why. Right? They're on SmackDown. One of them are injured. Okay. I well, I did not know that. Uh, the Hype Bros, maybe? Are they? They're not on the main card? Could it be the Hype Bros? 
mm, they've kind of been teasing a split. I guess it would make sense for them to to come out and maybe officially make the split happen. I mean, you got the Ascension and the Hype Bros. I don't think the Sting Brothers will be involved in that angle at all. Um, then you got Harper, and that's about it. There's no other real tag teams on SmackDown. So um, I guess we just leave it at that, and we'll have to wait and see what happens. And that NXT call, it makes sense here. Uh, either way, I'm actually looking forward to the segment because Breezango has such a weird and odd and awkward gimmick that they've actually been able to make it work thus far. So I think either way, uh, it's going to be pretty entertaining. I really hope it's not the Ascension. I think we could both agree that the Ascension don't really have a place right now in this segment. But either way, I mean, we're going to see what happens. And, uh, you know, this is an opportunity for WWE to really make a splash in the tag team division, especially because you have another uh, tag team match on the card that's a little bit more of a priority. Yeah, definitely. If they want to do this... Uh, make someone from NXT come up. That could be cool. But again, I don't put too much into this. I think the segments are entertaining on SmackDown, but I don't have a lot of hope for that. Uh, but let's move on to the main card because we do have that tag match that you were talking about. The Us defending against The New Day for the Tag Team Championship. Is this the time that The New Day become tag champions? They do. Absolutely. Uh, as much as I love the run that The Usos have had, I think right now SmackDown definitely needs some really big baby faces here and ultimately if you look at the new day in this situation um having them go over the usos doesn't necessarily hurt the usos like it's going to help the new day more than it would hurt the usos uh especially if you have a new tag team interrupt in the previous match mm -hmm. um i think that could be a really key thing so uh, if you have a heel tag team debut the usos get their rematch clause they lose the New Day go to SummerSlam. They defend in like a triple threat tag team match with some sort of gimmick. I think it, I think a lot of things could you know fit very well together in the puzzle. Um, but at the end of the day, I will say uh, with the New Day, specifically this tag team, I do want to see them shake things up. So if they do in fact win the titles, I hope you know as much as I love them, I hope that they do change things up. Whether somebody leaves somebody turns on them i mean something has to happen uh because the new day was a lot more exciting on raw than they've been on smackdown mm -hmm. and uh i mean my favorite guy in the new day is xavier woods i think he's a great mouthpiece i think he could do very well in a solo career um i think all three of them can technically do great in a solo career but if you look at xavier woods he has so much potential um I think this is just a matter of time of when it's going to happen, but I think this is the beginning of, hey, give them the titles, let them have a run, and then things start to go wrong. And when things go wrong, you have a team like Authors of Pain or Heavy Machinery or maybe even Sanity. I mean, I think somebody from NXT getting that call up can definitely do something really, really big at that point. Yeah, and I think uh, one thing that we need to like note here is that um, the New Day would be great to hold those tag titles again because of the marketing and, and, and all that on SmackDown. They're just very entertaining. Um, and one of the big things with marketing, um, I don't know if you saw this, but they did have New Day tag team title straps and they did it for the Raw brand. Yes, um, but I, I think saw it, that. Yep. I think it would be cool if they could like have those custom straps on SmackDown where they could have like the unicorns in the world and all that stuff. I know the ones that they have uh, was like commemorating their long tag team reign that they had 483 days it says on there um but i think if we could get that to be on smackdown it would be very cool to see like a custom thing with the silver i think it would work, work perfectly and just another marketing play for them i think it's great um i think it's better that the new day wins it um and then the usos could chase again because the usos are great um where they're at now i think i like their different characters without the face paint but i think it'd be better to see them in a chase um I don't know. I just I just like that too. And then it'd be cool because the new day, you know how successful they were on Raw to have them win on SmackDown would be cool. If it's not here, um, they they probably could do a multi man at SummerSlam, like you were saying, and then maybe have the new day win it at SummerSlam, be a bigger victory for them. So if the Usos do retain, I say they cheat somehow, and uh, then you could finally have the new day get the payoff at SummerSlam. That would be a good way to do it. Very very good point of view. I, you know, as much as I want to disagree with you. I really can't, to be honest, because I think both sides make sense. I think it makes sense to have a new team come up and, you know, kind of take away from the New Day. But you mentioned the custom title belt, which very well slipped my mind. So when you think of that, you're thinking merch sales, you're thinking business, you're thinking house shows, selling these things. Um, 
very very cool idea i could see it happening i yeah. just i just can't you know i do want to mention this i don't know if the usos deserve a long run i feel like right now there's so many champions that are heels like what where's the baby faces at in this situation Right, right, right. I I see what you're saying. I see, I see. Um, but I, but honestly, I think the Usos like there's, there just needs to be a shakeup with these tag teams now. We need a couple more tag teams in there on SmackDown. Um, but again, like the Usos and the New Day could have a very good rivalry together. Um, I'm just hoping we get the New Day and uh, Breezango have a like a a title picture. You know, that would be pretty cool. Um, because of the comedy that will come out of that, just have like a long like run with them for the titles i think would be really cool like the new day defending against breezango and then they do all these crazy skits backstage like that would just be pure gold i dig it i like it all right let's move on to the flag match john cena and rusev i swear that these guys had a flag match at one point am i wrong with this or did they already have a flag match i cannot remember i need to google this right now i know i honestly google it because i feel like this has happened before i know that these dudes had long mat like they had that card in the wrestlemania feud and stuff they had matches in 2015 i quit yeah. matches and stuff i guess maybe not a flag match but they did have pretty much every other type of match i think and then they had rusev come out at a tank on wrestlemania do you remember that that was the most insane thing ever such a sweet entrance and it, i think a lot of people forget about it yeah that was like the cool yeah everybody forgets about it it was so sweet, but everybody forgets because John Cena, LOL Cena wins at WrestleMania, you know? Yeah. Oh, man, this is going to be an interesting match. I mean, a flag match is cool. I don't know the rules of it. I tried to remember what they were. Uh, Do you want me to explain? Well, I know that you have to... I, I know you got to get the flag. I was wondering if you had to take it all the way up the, end, the ramp. You do. You do. As of, for this match, you do, yes. Okay, you got to take it up the ramp and place it in the, the thing. Yeah, up okay. the ramp. Put it down in like the little holster or whatever. Click it in there and then celebrate with your flag. Chance US of A. Yeah, they're going to go Super USA. I think what we're going to get here is USA coming out on top so that he can go against Jinder Mahal. That's the way I see it going down. That's just like my guess. I don't know if I you wanted, agree with me on that, but that's just what I guess. I want to disagree with you so bad here because it's like Rusev just came back. He's finally you know getting some attention i mean this is a huge deal he's against john cena which he you know he had a great feud with before but i'm still uh, like i just want to disagree with you like i don't want john cena to win i don't think john cena should verse jinder mahal but i think that's the route they're going to go here so it's logical it makes a lot of sense i just want to see what's going to happen with rusev because rusev at some point has to get in the title pitcher this year at some point um, who knows? Baron Corbin obviously has a briefcase that could pretty much change any any sort of thought process with this. See, but the way I see it is, as much as I like Orton to win, I don't think I think you get Gender to win again in the main event. We'll talk about that, but I think eventually you get down to when it's Gender and Cena. USA wins, Cena's champ, and then out comes a cash in from Corbin to take it from Cena. That's just what I think. Or you could just have Corbin cash in and ruin it for Cena. You know, either way, one of those things. But I think that it's going to come down to America versus Gender. I think SummerSlam big match John Cena Gender just makes sense. I don't know. That's just what I'm thinking. I, that's just my guess there. I don't know though. Um, what I do think is that it was amazing what Rusev tweeted. I don't know if you saw this tweet. Um, what was it? But big thing was Shane McMahon crashed his helicopter in the ocean. Not really okay. crashed it, but he landed his helicopter in the ocean. Okay. Um, and he he was all safe and nothing was wrong. And then Shane did an interview and all that. Um, Rusev tweeted out, uh, when you don't respond to my video messages, you land in the ocean at Shane McMahon. <laughs> hashtag karma. Hashtag WWE <laughs> Battleground. <laughs> so That's Rusev awesome. is the one that sabotaged Shane McMahon's thing. Yeah, that should be a storyline. That's amazing. That's so good. Uh, Do you think they would go with a storyline like that? <laughs> like, uh, they could. It'd be interesting if they did. I mean, they had Bruce it on Seven WG.com Shane. and stuff. But, I mean, I think what we get out of this is what I would like to see is John Cena uh, gets the W. I don't want it to. It doesn't necessarily have to. Like, I don't want to see this, but I see this as a booking plan. John Cena gets a W, goes on to SummerSlam. We get John, SummerSlam and gender. Uh 
that's the match I see. We'll talk a little bit more about my fantasy booking as we go along, but um, let's go into the next match here. We got Sami Zayn and Mike Kanellis added to the card randomly. Um, yeah, I guess I don't really care because they fought on SmackDown. They should have made Mike Kanellis' in-ring debut at the pay-per-view, but I think Mike Kanellis gets the win. Great guess. I actually don't agree with you again. Uh, Sammy should win here. And the reason why Sammy should win here is because I'll, I'll, a win over Mike Kanellis is great for Sammy, bad for Mike. But I think down the road, I think Mike Kanellis will get a third match, you know, best out of three type of thing, and he'll ultimately win the entire feud. Um, based on the match that they had on SmackDown, I can see Sami Zayn winning, uh, not necessarily in a clean way, which is ironic because he's a babyface, but I think things will get kind of tricky. I think Sami Zayn wins this match. Mike Kanellis gets his first loss, which is great, so that way we don't have him see like this huge undefeated streak that becomes valuable. But then later down the road, they have a third match, and Mike Kanellis ultimately wins the feud and ends the feud. Or they could just kind of make this the new Sami Zayn and uh, Kevin Owens, and just they could fight a million more times, I guess, because that's what they do with Sami Zayn. But I give Sami the win, and then it goes to a third match at some point where Kanellis ultimately wins. All right, let's do this, right? Let's do this. Here's the booking. We go fantasy booking 101 right here because I got a lot of fantasy ideas for this program. And, you know, you're thinking, Sammy and Mike Kanellis, what's the what's the fantasy here? Well, um, you get Maria involved again. You could do two ways here. If you want Mike to win, um, the way you could do it is Maria gets involved, distracts Sammy Zane, Mike wins, right? And then you yeah. could lead to another one where Maria is either banned from ringside or you could do some stupid gimmick with her, whatever you want to do. Uh, or she tries to get involved again in a third match and she gets thrown out, you know, like, hey, get out of here. No. And then she's upset and then Mike loses, that kind of thing. Yeah. On the other hand, if you want Sammy to win, right? You, yeah. You uh, have Mike and Nellis and Sammy doing some like, or Mike and Nellis and uh, Mike and Maria doing some love fest stuff. Uh, Sammy bumps into Mike and knocking Maria off the apron. Mike is distracted. Sammy rolls her, rolls him up for the win, right? He's, he's worried Perfect. about the girl. They have Perfect. a rematch, right? There's a rematch. I already got the ending for the rematch, right? It's, that's how my mind works here. The rematch is same thing happens. Maria takes a bump. Sammy's like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. I got to – I or what – yeah, she she takes a bump, twists her ankle or something. Sammy feels bad about it because he's the one that knocks her off this time instead of Mike because yeah. Mike moves out of the way. And he's like, oh, no. So he tries to help her up. Uh, Mike ends up hitting his whatever, whatever his finisher is, his little Samoan driver. Samoan driver. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't remember what the name of it was. But he hits a Samoan driver. Um, and then it turns out Maria was just faking the ankle injury the entire time. And that's the end. Love it. That's how I got it's my booking. Love it. I could picture this. I'm actually watching it in my head right now. It's perfect, Tony. That's what I got played out. So you could go either way with this one. But like I said, you could do the, uh, I think it makes sense if Sammy knocked her off, rolls her up, and then uh, goes for it again. You can give Mike the, the the loss here, and then they do another match, and then she ends up faking the ankle injury and good to go. So that's what I got for that. So we'll move on. We'll move on. We'll talk about the women we got the Fatal Five way determined number one contender for the WWE Women's SmackDown Championship. We got Charlotte, Becky, Natalia, Tamina, and Lana, which I'm sure you're going to have. Um, uh, pff, what's her name? I can't even think of her name. The champion. Bring it to the floor. The glow. What's her name? Naomi. Naomi. <laughs> Couldn't think of her name for some reason. Uh, I was just thinking of bring it to the floor. You could have her on commentary. So we'll see that probably. Um, I know who wins. Who wins this one? Well, it's very easy to predict. Uh, either Tamina or Lana. Yeah, I think what happens, right? This is going to be interesting, though, because um, we really don't... Like, honestly, we don't want to see another Lana-Naomi match. Let's be real. We don't. Let's be real. We want that. a fatal six-way. No, no. Let's be real. <laughs> so you have Lana win, right? Basically, okay. what you do is you have Tamina do all the work. She does all okay. the work because they're like, you know, Lana's paying Tamina or whatever the story is there. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you have Charlotte and Becky have their little thing because sh- whatever from SmackDown. And then Natalia is just kind of Natalia, whatever. Then we got Lana and Tamina. Um, you, I think you have Tamina do most of the work and then uh, Lana eliminates Tamina. That's oh how I'd gosh. like to see it go down. 
Uh, Everything like, I said about you earlier about being so great at fantasy booking, I can't. No, 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 no. She has to do that because, or okay, fine. Don't do that. Have Tamina lay down for it, right? Lays down for it. And we're like, why would you lay down? Well, there was money involved. I don't know. Something could be interesting. What do you got? What, what's, what's your hot take from this one? It doesn't matter who wins. In all honesty, like this match doesn't really interest me. Uh, theoretically, Charlotte should win. Just because Charlotte's the the queen. Okay, so SummerSlam, um, your big match, you want Charlotte and Naomi. I think that would be the best as quality of wrestling. No, it's not. The best match that you can have is the Cyborg versus Becky Lynch. But of course... No, we're talking about Women's SmackDown Championship match. You can do yeah. Cyborg and Becky. So Becky doesn't win this one then, right? Okay, they'll have their match at SummerSlam. But then you do Charlotte, so, Charlotte and Naomi. They might as well, it's just such a cluster. Like, I just don't care about this. Like, I wish I can tell you I really do. Honestly, any one of these women could win, and it would be great. Um, if you really want to have Tamina, because it looks like they're about to push her anyways, if you really want to have a woman that's, like, on a on a crazy streak, just have Tamina win and have them feud with Lana, I guess. You know, Lana could make a mistake. Tamina's like, no, screw this. You know, I'm going to take the chance. And, you know leave the baggage behind if it was an elimination i could see like lana getting the win here like i said um stealing it somehow after tamina does the work but i don't i don't know i don't i don't really see any money in lana versus naomi at SummerSlam. that just doesn't interest me um i think charlotte would be the best and she could win that championship at SummerSlam if we want to take it off naomi i don't know it's up to you but I mean, Charlotte could hold the title till till WrestleMania. For all I care, let's do that. How about she holds it for a couple of years and just call it a day? Okay, sounds good. Then she can fight Cyborg at WrestleMania. Sounds good. Sounds call good it a day. All right, and then uh, we get interference from Ronda Rousey, and then uh, finally the Four Horsewomen versus the Four Horsewomen Four Horse in WWE. <laughs> so there you go. We booked a we booked a whole year worth of programming. This year's WrestleMania it's going to be Charlotte and Cyborg. The next year's WrestleMania Four Horsewomen versus Four Horsewomen. All right, there it is in the books. Perfect. Booked it easy. All right, now we got your dude Baron Corbin, my dude Baron Corbin versus your dude Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, yeah, Nakamura. That's yeah. I guess Baron losing doesn't matter. He's got the briefcase, so if he loses to Nakamura, it's fine. Um, I think they're pushing for Nakamura AJ Styles at SummerSlam. Sounds like a dumb idea to me. I would have saved it for WrestleMania, but that seems to be the route they want to go. I don't know why they want to go that route. Uh, I think I know why. Okay, they didn't explain to me why they do SummerSlam and not wait till WrestleMania. Do I think it's the best idea? No. But do I think I'm comfortable with it? Yes. Why not have AJ Styles uh, drop the title to Nakamura at SummerSlam? Nakamura drops the title at Royal Rumble, and then at WrestleMania, Nakamura wins it again in a seven-star match because Meltzer says no. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, them they fight at Rumble, and then they fight. Yeah. Then they fight at Mania again. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. That's a big, big possibility. I do think um, I would really just like to see AJ hold it until Mania build that credibility on that title, make it a worthwhile title, bigger than the WWE championship, bigger than the universal championship, make that the title where he's defending it all the time. Um, and then Nakamura, you know, he wants AJ Styles and that's when it happens. WrestleMania. But if we get Let it, me ask you a question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm going to ask you a question. Kenny Omega and Okada. How many times have they fought now? Three times. Uh, or they're going to have a third fight. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think third fights coming up. Cool. This is WWE's version of Okada and Omega, just so you know. Like this is what they're trying to get for like that that crazy like upscale, you know, everybody loves this match, unbelievable, 35 minutes of time. They're going to get it. They're going to get a great reaction from this match. I do want to see it at SummerSlam just because I think with these two guys, they they've already made this US title so important anyways. Um but I think at Royal Rumble, too, having the title get dropped, uh, these two guys are showing that they don't need to be in the Rumble because, you know, they're they're fighting for something that means a lot anyways. And then, of course, at WrestleMania, one of the main events, the U.S. title, has all the prestige in the world because people are so in love with everything that's happened, you know? I think you have a great outlook on the Okada Omega stuff. Um, I would just take a page out of that feud, and I know WWE doesn't really do this ever, and if they did it, it would be 
kind of out of left field, but if they did a time limit draw, right? How about we get AJ and Nakamura? Uh, 60 minutes, right? That'll be interesting. WWE. I don't think this is really ever going to happen, but this is just fantasy land 101 here. Um, I would do AJ Nakamura go to a draw in their first match or both get counted or something crazy, you know, where they're both counted out or, you know, draw in their first one. So everyone's like, could you imagine if they ever met again and then WrestleMania or Rumble or Mania or whatever you want to do? If you want to do three and have them fight at Rumble and Mania, you could do that. Or if you just wanted to have it, you know, they do their one match at SummerSlam and then we have a, their their other match at, at Mania, you know. But I think they they should leave the fans wanting more at Rumble or at uh, SummerSlam and then finish it at Mania, kind of how I see it. Whether they want to have another match in between there or not, it's up to them. But <clears throat> that's just how I see it going, so... I think either I think, way, I think AJ puts that title on the map, though. For sure, I mean, you got to give credit where it's due. I think for this last year, the U.S. title has done some pretty cool things, and a lot of that is due to Kevin Owens. But uh, AJ Styles is so legit, and he, and he treats this title. I mean, it's not just it's not just the way that he presents it on TV, but when he goes on Twitter and he and he's talking about Madison Square Garden, like it looks like this guy actually likes the fact that he's U.S. champion. You know, it's not like he. It's not like one of those situations where it's like, oh, you know, I'm not a world champion for WWE. Like, mm-hmm. like this guy actually takes pride in this. So I think when you consider that as a factor, people see that and, and they start to believe, you know what? This AJ Styles guy is valuing this title just as much as he would with the world title. And that's why this title is so important. And, and keep in mind, Nakamura, I mean, he is finally becoming, I mean, a lot of people don't like Nakamura's main event main event main roster run so far a lot mm-hmm. of people are kind of negative about it but if you think about somebody he should be paired with it's aj styles yeah that was the number yeah. one dream thing that we were we we're like okay we need that at wrestlemania and hey if we could get it earlier and they can make a spectacle out of this they can make it one of the greatest feuds in wwe history i think wwe has the ability to do it here but i don't think it happens over one match i think it happens over a series of matches i think with a series of twists and turns and things like that but ultimately at the end of you know at at the end of the pay-per-view you got to realize that one of these guys will be a champion and one of these guys won't be a champion but we're going to view both of them as champions because we don't really care who wins the title at this point Mm -hmm. we're going to care about who's you know just putting on the best entertainment right right and then after this we got to figure out where goes kevin owens since probably not going to win the championship back i mean he could but i don't think they're going to hot potato that belt really um, but I think Kevin Owens, after this, there could be, like, a number of feuds he could go in. Like, there's a lot of uh, untapped potential on SmackDown. I mean, even if you wanted to pair him up with Orton, that could be something you could do. Um, I mean, even Rusev. I don't know if you do Kevin Owens or Rusev, though. Uh, but on particular, I'm thinking maybe Chad Gable. Yeah. Um, since he's newly found singles man. Uh, or if Chad Gable wants, um, you know, I was thinking either him and Kevin Owens or him and Randy Orton. You know, the how 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 sweet would that be to put Chad Gable, uh, his first program being singles against Randy Orton? Would be very crazy and unexpected. But and then have him hold his own against Randy Orton, like that would be like a proving point for him. And I think that would be great. But Kevin Owens, um, there's a lot. I mean, even Luke Harper. I mean, there's there's so much stuff. Even if they wanted to do Kevin Owens in uh, versus Mike in. Maria, there's 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 options there, yeah. and I think Kevin Owens will be fine. Exactly, very true. Um, let's see, do we go through everything? We already did Sammy, Mike. I guess we're on to the main event now. Jinder Mahal and the Singh brothers versus Randy Orton. So uh, this went down to the Punjabi Prison match, where Orton says he's going to be champion, and Jinder is going to do his thing here. Um, it's very interesting. We'll have to see if the Singh brothers get involved in this match. I'm assuming they will be, so Orton can throw them around the Punjabi prison. Will be very interesting. They're gonna fly. They're gonna fly off the Punjabi prison. I see that going down. That's probably what's gonna I do. happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. most likely there. Um, I gotta give this though to Jinder Mahal. Like I said, my my booking here 101 is going that we're gonna go with John Cena and Jinder at SummerSlam USA versus because that's the only reason they're doing this flag match is to build up John Cena as Mister America, like. That's the only reason they're doing the flag matches because they want to put down the throats that USA, USA, USA until Jinder comes out. But the, the problem is, is like Jinder shouldn't be getting the hate that he's getting because he's not anti-USA. He's pro Jinder Mahal. You know what I mean? So he's, yeah. he's, he's like, I'm getting disgraced. It's really making, I really don't understand this because he's not the bad guy in this. He's just saying, hey, look, 
you guys treat me differently because of my skin color, from where I come from, uh, my different language. Uh, you're racist, pretty much. And he's pretty much right in, this, in that sense. But uh, I think we're building the John Cena and gender. Uh, the only question after this is where does Randy Orton go? And again, I think there's there's potential for him to go with any number of superstars of this. I mean, even if you wanted to do something like Orton's like, I want another championship match. But maybe if I challenge Baron Corbin for that briefcase, I could get a championship match. You know what I mean? There's It'll be very, very cool. I do want to say what should be really interesting would be if Baron Corbin teases a cash-in at all. Mm-hmm. And then perhaps because he teases a cash-in while they're in the match, Randy Orton hits him with an RKO and doesn't want him to get involved. So this way, once Baron Corbin does you know, eventually cash in and become a champion, they could kind of go back to that with Randy Orton and say, oh, look, they have unfinished business. Right, right. I th- think that they need to at least tease it. Um, and if Orton somehow wins this, I think that's when a cash in would happen. I think uh, Orton would win somehow, barely. You know, like because it because I think the main objective is to escape the Punjabi prison. If I'm correct on that, so if he escapes it, um, and then then you could have. Baron come out, cash in, throw him back in the Punjabi and just go to, go to town on him, you know what I mean? And that would be very interesting to see. So that's only, I think if Orton does win, he's going to lose it right to Baron, but I really I, I really do think that we're building up to John Cena and Jinder Mahal for the for that WWE Championship. Which wouldn't main event SummerSlam, right? It would probably be the Universal title. Uh, I mean, John Cena can main event if he wants, but he, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, it can be whatever you want, man. I don't know. Do you want to put the Raw title over? I mean, WWE, the main title is always on Raw, um, although I do feel like the history of the WWE Championship is bigger. But, I mean, I guess, uh, what, 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 which one would you prefer? I'd prefer the WWE Championship, but... That's because it's, I mean, the same title that they've had for a long time. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not the red design. So the red design and the fact that it's a universal title just sounds like it's different, right? But when you think WWE Championship, it didn't matter what the title belt looked like. It was always the most important title. You know, it was always more important than the World Heavyweight Championship, in my opinion. Yeah, the the only reason the World Heavyweight Championship was there was because... um, just because it was on Raw, you know? I think whatever championship on Raw is most important, but I don't know. We, we'll we find out, though, what they want to do there. I think either one will be fine. I think Orton and Ginger isn't going to be like your five-star classic match. No, but, not at all. It'll have a good story. But also having have... Brock Lesnar in there. They, they always seem to throw him at the end of the show, and then they have like a shocker ending, you know? They always try to shock us with Brock Lesnar, so they'll probably throw that one in the main event, but... Honestly, like you said, uh, Battleground should be a good show regardless of what's going to come out of it. I think AJ and Kevin Owens will probably steal the show as far as matches go. Nakamura and Baron might be uh, like one of those ones that is like a sleeper match, you know. They can do some good stuff. Baron Corbin's had some good stuff with Kalisto. I don't know if you remember those matches. He had some pretty good ones with Kalisto. So if he can do something with uh, Nakamura, it'll be fun. Uh, Sami Zayn and Mike Kanellis will be good as well. John Cena and Rusev is always going to be fun. It's it's just a fun match, you know what I mean? The flag match, gimmicks. Everybody loves a good gimmick match, so that'll be good. Um, and then the Punjabi prison, I don't know. I haven't seen that in a while, and I think the last one had Great Khali or something. But we'll see. Yeah. We'll see how it all plays out. Anyway, I'm looking forward to this. I think there's a lot of potential coming out of this. Hopefully we can get something better because I feel like we're, we were really hot on SmackDown for a while. And then things after the superstar shakeup just haven't been up to par as they were before the shakeup. Exactly. I mean, we have so many different things to consider. So with this, uh, with this special event on Sunday, we just have to realize that we can't get mad at the results because this happens with a lot of pay-per-views they typically have a little bit of a not the greatest build, right? And then the pay-per-view ends and you're like, oh, I see where they're going with this. If WWE can do that with Battleground, I'm cool with that. But if they have a pay-per-view where it's basically just wrestling matches and we don't see anything or we can't think of anything big happening, 
then there's no excitement for you know future episodes. So I, I do think something big will happen at this pay-per-view. I do think that we get a debut or a return of some point, um, especially because this is the summer, you know, summer of 2017. Something big has to happen this summer. Uh, there's so much talk about Brock Lesnar possibly leaving WWE for UFC again. Mm -hmm. If that is, in fact, true, I mean, that's Raw's problem. But Raw also has a lot of superstars. SmackDown has a lot of guys that have not really been in the main event scene, but they have a huge abundance of mid-carders. So, you know, who can we create a new star? You mentioned Chad Gable. We don't really know what's going to happen with him. You know, at some point, does he get involved with someone? I mean, there's just so many different possibilities. So even though the build hasn't been the best, I do see a lot of great things coming after Battleground. And honestly, I'm going to enjoy the pay-per-view for what it is because a lot of these guys are talented. So I know it's not going to be anything, you know, crappy if that makes sense there's gonna be a lot of cool stuff happening um granted you know some of the matches aren't uh, as a big deal as normal but uh you know it looks like a glorified episode of smackdown that could potentially blow us away yeah like i said there's, there's some fun gimmick matches involved in this that'll keep things interesting and we'll have a clearer direction on where SummerSlam is going um now, I was just thinking you were talking about this being main eventing or the Raw title being main eventing. Um, I forgot that the rumored Raw match for the main event is a four-way Brock, Joe, Braun, and Roman. So if that's the main event, then that'll be probably the main one, of course. Um, yeah. But we'll see. Well, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Uh, again, I hope Chad Gable finds something out of this and then we get you know aj styles and nakamura at wrestlemania not SummerSlam wrestlemania but we'll see we'll see anyway guys that will close us on our predictions and preview for the battleground paper view 2017 make sure you join us live immediately following battleground we'll be doing our post show as we always do to talk about this um, you can follow us uh, at omgwrestling.com. If you want to check out the YouTube, you can just go to tonypizzaguy.com. That'll link you right over to the YouTube channel. Um, but make sure you follow us on iTunes because, again, we are giving that $25 Apple gift card away to one lucky person who leaves a review. So go over there, review the podcast, and let us know what you think. And we're always looking forward for your thoughts. So let us know. Leave a comment. And that's about it. We'll end it here. Ango, follow him at Tango with Ango. Me at Tony Pizza Guy on Twitter. And for Ango, I'm Tony Pizza Guy.